changed tack completely. You're watching Q and A. Our next question comes from Warwick and Good Sir. Thank you, Tony. Um, after the deaths of five Australian soldiers, the Prime Minister said that we are in Afghanistan uh, to complete the mission and see it through. I uh, understand that the Leader of the Opposition also endorses this particular view. I'd like to hear from the panel as to what their answers are as to uh, how will Australia know when we have completed the mission. I'll go to Nitin first Sorry, because... I, uh, I actually couldn't see, see the guy until the last second, so I didn't yeah. actually catch it. Uh, well, he, he's, uh, he's asking uh, with the mission in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. um, how will we know when it's finished? Mm -hmm. How will we know when we've done the job, completed the mission? It's the same <laughs> question really for British troops as it is for Australian troops. Well, it's a bottomless pit, isn't it? I mean, if you go... I mean, it's, it's 10 years in a, in a country where nothing's been achieved at all. Um, you know, the, the intention is to pull out in 2014 and I can't see um, what is, what's going to be achieved between now and then that's going to be any different. I mean, they haven't been able to, uh, to achieve a stable government. Um, I don't know exactly what, what the intention is to achieve over there right now because they're, they're, there's nothing being achieved that I, can, that I can see. I mean, if there was a threat from <coughs> Afghanistan to... Um, to any kind of security from countries like uh, America and so on, or Australia or England, um, then uh, then that's still there, and it's probably going to get worse. So I don't really understand what the intention is to, of being there. I see you shaking your head as well, angry. Are you? I agree mm. entirely. I've, um, I've been there twice, and on two extremely different circ under circumstances, extremely different, but. Uh, what is the, yeah, it's never been clear what is the aim. It's an unwinnable war, if you like. Uh, I mean, the Russians proved that. Um, what are we trying to achieve? Are we trying to get rid of the heads of the, of the extreme groups or what, are, you know, I, I just don't, I, I, you certainly can't devalue, because I've been there and seen it firsthand, you can't devalue the commitment that our troops have to trying to bring some sort of order in, into this chaos, but but can we do it? In my personal opinion, I just can't see how it can be achievable. Sarah Moss. Well, it's funny you should say that because you say the troops are, are committed and they're trying to bring stability. And I think what they're trying to do is protect the Afghani citizens. I mean, this is this is the idea. I mean, I certainly have concerns about the treatment of women and girls in Afghanistan, and yeah. um, you know. I don't think nothing has happened in the last 10 years. I think some conditions have improved for that you know, half of the population. So let's not completely discount that. Um, I think these tragic deaths are very upsetting and it's, and it's proper that we'd have this discussion. Should we continue to stay there? It's 38 soldiers we've lost in 10 years. This is a major <laughs> sacrifice. But I don't want to see a sort of knee-jerk reaction um, to, to pull out at this stage as a result of this tragedy, because I don't think it does justice to the troops who have lost their lives already. I don't think it does uh, justice to the mission overall. If we abandon the Afghani people at this stage, and some Afghani people have been fighting alongside us, we leave them in a very vulnerable position if we don't handle the, um, the removal of troops very carefully. So I'm all in favor of not being in Afghanistan anymore in a military capacity, but I think it has to be managed very carefully. And that's probably why the government is not really keen to just suddenly pull out. Tony Burke, how will Australia know when the mission is completed? That was the question. Yeah, the... Oh, just, I, I remember sitting in the cabinet room after we'd only been there for a few months, the first time when uh, a note came in uh, Kevin Rudd was Prime Minister at the time, the note came into him uh, that we'd lost the first soldier and I remember it dawns on you at that moment that as a member of government you're no longer a commentator and you do have a direct responsibility, very direct. Um, well, one the, MP the, uh, over the weekend, Mal Washer, came out and said he felt he had blood on his hands for being involved in at all as a politician in the decisions to send people abroad. Yeah, and I don't think... Uh, some people say, oh, you shouldn't say things like that. I, I don't think you can walk away from it. Uh, there, are, there are consequences when you're involved in military action and don't pretend there aren't consequences if you don't get involved. Yeah. Uh, mm. There are consequences both ways. Uh, they are real and if you're not up for it, you don't get involved. Um, the mission that was defined, and it wasn't defined originally, originally it was just to defeat the Taliban. Uh, the mission was then defined that we had the job in one province of getting their army up to scratch to establish a battalion. Uh, now, 
that job is nearly done and that's why the transition is now underway. Uh, but we certainly shouldn't get this close and allow a murderer who kills some of our own and then runs to undo the importance of what we are achieving. Because to leave Afghanistan without its own military capable of making sure the Taliban doesn't re-arise. But one of the reasons, I'll just interrupt you there, one of the reasons this gets really murky is because of what happens when Australian soldiers and other American soldiers and others are killed. Uh, because we went off, uh, our troops went off to find the killer. In the process, they've managed to kill an imam and his son. Uh, now the Afghanistan government is saying they're just poor farmers um, who shouldn't have been killed, and the Australian government saying, no, no, they were Taliban. But one of them was a 70-year-old imam. Now, do you not think that his relatives are going to take up arms if they haven't mm. already and fight against the troops that killed them? Yeah, and, yep. and I've seen those reports. I, I, I don't have the information at my hand to be able to to be able to give a, a decent answer to that. Stephen um, Smith did today, said they were both Taliban. Okay, well then, then that'd be the, the best information that we have. I, I haven't seen that. But isn't that but the problem? I, because we never really get complete transparency of what's actually going on. I mean, oh, will we, Tony, do, do you think we'll ever actually see the details of how those people were killed? Tony, Tony we, we, are, we are in a war zone in one of the most difficult countries to, to work with in the, in, in the world in that way. Um, Af Afghanistan is, uh, you know, you've, you've got your, your tunnels and your hills and the, as, as an entire landscape, Afghanistan is unbelievably complex and difficult. We went there because it was the home of the Taliban. We went there because there were thousands of people being killed from networks and training grounds that weren't only based there, but that were centralised there. And uh, the mission was to defeat the Taliban and then make sure we didn't leave them with simply civil war with no capacity for governance or their own military. We're in the transition of nearly having completed that. OK, I was going to, I, I, Fiona, I need to hear from you. Thanks, Tony. I completely disagree that nothing has been achieved and I think that is completely wrong. How do you know? Because you look at what our troops are doing over there in terms of the provision of the training and the expertise. And I think for us to sit here around a semicircular desk and say that nothing's been achieved, uh, in my view, is, enti is, entirely, <laughs> is entirely incorrect. These are troops who are over there who, who believe in what they are doing, they are committed to what they are doing, and they are absolute professionals. And they are over there every day backing themselves, and we should be backing them. Absolutely. And I think it is just completely completely wrong to say that nothing has been achieved. It is incredibly difficult. But we've got our young Australians over there doing everything they can to make that nation a better place. And I'm not going to sit here and say that they're not achieving anything. OK, we're going to... Oh, actually, there's a, another question with the hand up. I think, actually, you did get a question before, but we'll quickly come to you, because I've just realised. Just yep. as an Afghan-Australian here, uh, uh, with the strong links to Afghanistan, first and foremost, I'd like to uh, appreciate the work that uh, our soldiers are doing and uh, pay more respect to fallen soldiers. Unfortunately, I can tell you that not much is done for Afghan people. They are suffering. They are much worse off than they were under Taliban. The security is ruined. No one can travel from one side of the country to another with fear of death, prosecution and so on and so forth. So what you're telling now is far from the truth. Okay, we'll take that as a comment. Our next question deals with... <laughs>